Everybody loves a good story. This is a nation of storytellers, after all. From Beowulf to Shakespeare to Harry Potter, storytelling has powerfully influenced the history and the culture of this country. Stories are how we make sense of a complex world. They help us to understand each other, and they define our values. And I'm not just talking about fiction. Since the time of King Alfred the Great, this country's most compelling leaders have influenced the behavior of their citizens by telling true stories that resonate and inspire. Some of you may have seen the new film, Darkest Hour, about Winston Churchill and how he rallied this country in the early months of the Second World War. He achieved this largely through his effective use of narrative. We're facing our own kind of darkest hour these days, and that's the NHS crisis. You don't need me to tell you that the situation is fairly desperate. We have overflowing hospital wards, battlefield triage conditions in the emergency departments. It can take a minor miracle to get a GP appointment these days. But what if it didn't have to be this way? What if the power to save the NHS was within our control, yours and mine? What if we didn't have to rely on politicians and NHS managers to bail us out? Here's the thing. Medicine is also about narratives, stories. My job as a doctor is to listen to the stories my patients tell me, and together we figure out what's going on with their health. It's absolutely the best part of my job. But my interest in storytelling goes beyond my work as a GP. In addition to being a medical doctor, I also have a master's degree in the history of medicine. And it was my history degree that taught me to think critically about the stories we tell about health and medicine. In particular, recently I've taken an interest in the narratives that are used when we talk about the NHS crisis. My mother-in-law has a subscription to The Times, and she very kindly clips all the articles that she thinks will interest my husband and me. So every couple of weeks, we get this bundle of cuttings, and it's a real treat to sit down with a cup of tea and read through articles about all sorts of things, but always including the latest news about health and the NHS. And it was by reading all in one sitting like this that I started to notice certain key themes and phrases that crop up again and again and again when you read about the state of the NHS. It started to become almost a game with me. And I started looking at other newspapers and media outlets to find out what story they are selling us. And it's just the same. The historian in me became bothered because although the facts themselves are largely accurate, they're being sort of massaged to tell us a story that I think robs us of a bigger truth. And since the NHS crisis shows no sign of improving, I'd like to suggest it's a story that doesn't serve us well. So I'd like to invite you all to think like historians for a few minutes. Let's analyze the dominant narrative, the story of the NHS crisis as it is presented to us by the media. Then we'll look at some facts, and we can decide together if we think there is a better story to be told. So I'd like to start by looking at the word shortage. This is, hands down, our favorite way of describing the challenges we are all experiencing in the NHS. We have a shortage of doctors, especially GPs. We have a shortage of nurses and midwives 
and hospital beds and funding generally. Where have all the doctors gone? Retiring early to cash in their pensions or abandoning us all for a nicer life in Australia, if you believe what you read. But do we actually have less doctors than we used to? No, we actually have more doctors per person than ever before. In fact, the number of doctors increased by 50% between 2000 and 2012. That's a faster increase than any other country in Europe. It's a fact that's being left out of the story of shortages. How about funding? Are we spending less money on the NHS these days? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Now, how about health spending per person? No, that's gone up too. OK, let's take another look at this word shortage. What does it really mean? Well, a shortage just means not enough. What causes a shortage? It's a lack of balance, quite simply, between supply and demand. So it's clear now that despite our increasing supply of doctors and our increasing supply of NHS funding, it's not enough to cancel out what must be an overwhelming increase in the demand for NHS services. So now when we see the phrase NHS shortages, we know that at the root we're talking about an increasing demand for health care. So what does the media tell us is the cause of this overwhelming demand for health care? Well, <laughs> Mainly, they try not to talk about it at all. <laughs> but when they do, if you pay attention, there is one phrase that'll jump out at you. And it's this, older, sicker. In one stack of articles, cuttings, from my mother-in-law, this theme appeared in four out of five articles about the NHS crisis, just from a two-week period. So let's look at the facts. In the UK, 18% of our population is over the age of 65. 20 years ago, that number was 15.9%. That's an increase of just, an absolute increase of just 2%, 2.1% in 20 years. Is that really enough to label our population as older? People over the age of 85 represent a tiny fraction of our population, just 2.4%. Now, the projections for 30 to 50 years from now are far more dramatic. But since we're just talking about the cause of today's crisis, can it really be blamed on a demographic shift of 2%? And what's the problem with an older population anyway? Well, in this country, healthcare spending increases dramatically over the age of 65. So that 18% of our population accounts for 40% of our healthcare spending. That's disproportionate. But please recognize that the majority of our health spending, 60%, is spent on people under the age of 65. As a GP, most of the people I see in a day are not elderly. So anyway, why does health spending increase as we age? Well, older people are more likely to have health problems. In this country, if you rounded up all the people that were 80 and older, only one in seven of them would actually be entirely healthy. But not once, not even once, have I seen a newspaper article or a politician ask the question, of whether it's the way we're aging in this country that's part of the problem. So let's spend a few minutes with that now. In 2005, the magazine National Geographic published an article by Dan Buettner called The Secrets of a Long Life. It described five geographic regions of the world, so-called blue zones. 
where people are up to 10 times more likely to live to the age of 100 than we are. The Blue Zones tell us a true story in which older people are not heavily medicated and demented and dependent on carers, but instead are physically active, cognitively healthy, contributing to their communities well into their 90s and beyond. Let's return to the UK now. Back to the story of older, sicker. We've talked about older. Let's talk about sicker. In the UK, we have 15 million people living with a chronic disease. That's people of all ages, about one in four of us. This includes things like asthma, diabetes, depression, high blood pressure. According to the British Medical Journal, if we include chronic pain in that list, suddenly the percentage goes up to 43% of us who are living with a chronic disease. We are so unwell. Chronic disease is our leading cause of disability and death. And this is where things are gonna start to get a little uncomfortable. According to The Lancet, 40% of our NHS workload is preventable. Let me say that a different way. Almost 50% of our demands on the NHS are caused by our toxic lifestyles. The main culprits, unhealthy diets, too much alcohol, not enough physical activity, smoking, loneliness. There's plenty of data to back up these statistics. More than 80% of cardiovascular disease, that's things like stroke, heart attacks, is preventable. More than 40% of cancers are preventable. That number may be as high as two-thirds. Almost all type 2 diabetes is preventable. Things like mental illness and dementia, we're increasingly learning that those things can be prevented too. So let's go back to the blue zones. These five very diverse parts of the world, very different genetics and environments, what do they have in common? plant-based diets, constant, steady physical activity, low levels of stress, close relationships with family members and their communities. The people in the blue zones live longer, they live better, and they do so with much less need for medical care. So, that's why I get bothered by the older, sicker story we are being sold. I think that when you stick the word sicker right up against the older like that, I think the sicker part just kind of slides under the radar. And before we really have time to think about it, the story moves on to safe things like GP shortages and budgets. And so we are being seduced into believing that there's nothing much that any of us can do to relieve the pressures on the NHS. I think newspapers and politicians like the older, sicker story because it stops us from feeling guilty. And making people feel guilty doesn't sell newspapers and it doesn't win elections. But we don't need to feel guilty, we can feel empowered. We can take more responsibility for the lifestyle choices that are within our control. We can be more aware that the wrong choices are harming the NHS, but the right choices can save it, can save us. And let's remember, the number one rule of any great story is that it starts with an ordinary hero, Harry Potter, Luke Skywalker. 
a pretty ordinary person, just like you and me, full of flaws and imperfections. But this ordinary hero accepts a call to action and is willing to undergo a transformation in order to achieve incredible things and save the world. The UK is a nation of 65 million heroes. I see it every day in my community, in my work. <laughs> you don't need an American to tell you this, but I'll say it anyway. You are brave, you are kind, you are resolute. This is actually a, a great time for a new movie about Winston Churchill. Not that he's a shining example of healthy lifestyles, but, <laughs> but because I think we could all stand to be reminded of just how outrageous was his faith in the sheer grit of the British people. And Churchill was right. We absolutely can turn the NHS crisis around. And we have no time to lose. So let's stop wasting time with feeble narratives. Saving the NHS by turning the UK into a blue zone? Now that's a great story. Thank you. <laughs>